Um, I'm Dr. Rita McGuire. I'm the Chief Medical Officer for Wakana, as well as one of the co-founders. And each and every Wednesday evening, um, I have a lot of fun in really talking about different um, disease entities that we see. Uh, sometimes many of us on the line uh, have some of these conditions that I talk about, maybe friends and families that we know and love, maybe coworkers. Uh, but tonight we're going to talk about uh, how CBD can be a benefit for those who have um, heart conditions, uh, hypertension, atherosclerosis, heart disease, maybe a history of having had a myocardial infarction, a heart attack, or maybe even those who are on the line that want to maintain a healthy heart. Well, I represent the pillar of health uh, here at Wakana. Again, I'm the chief medical officer. I'm also an obstetrician gynecologist, so I'm still a uh, practicing physician. I'm still doing hysterectomies and C-sections. I've been practicing for over 30 years. I'm also into cosmetic surgery where I do tummy tucks and liposuctions and, and have had the, the joy of using CBD, which we're going to talk about tonight, in my practice. Um, I was also one of the physicians here in Illinois that was asked to testify in the uh, passing of the adult use law, the recreational law, which made Illinois the 11th state to um, institute recreational marijuana. So I'm really excited that I've been in the space of cannabis for the last three years, and I've absolutely seen so many patients to get a lot of great results, so many patients that have been able to come off of traditional pharmaceutical medications that address uh, a lot of disease entities that we talk about. So let's talk a little bit about our company. Well, the name of our company is Wakana. And on April 20th, just of 2019, Wakana was brought into existence through the synergistic efforts and shared foundational values of four African-American women who believe that health, wealth, legacy, and freedom are gifts that belong to all people. So each one of us, each co-founder represents a different pillar. We'll start with our CEO, Melissa Boston. Melissa Boston is the visionary uh, of Wakana. She brings to us over 29 years of direct sales experience. In fact, she has trained over 50,000 distributors in over 40 countries. She is a social media strategist. She has been named MVP of five out of the six corporate America position jobs she has held. In fact, at the age of 32 and a half years old, she fired her boss. And she truly brings to us the vision of Wakana. Dr. Patricia Van Pelt is our president. She is a state senator here in Illinois. She's serving her third term. She's an entrepreneur. She's a businesswoman and author. And our fabulous Phyllis Nash, phenomenal Phyllis Nash, uh, we coin as our mint wife because she's a senior VP of sales and truly births all of the possibilities in our business here at Wakana. And then myself again, Dr. Rita McGuire, I'm the chief medical officer, uh, bring to you over 30 years in the healthcare profession as an obstetrician gynecologist. So a little bit about our company. We are much more than a CBD company. See, we are a movement. And our whole vision is that we exist to help in the negative stigma that has caused communities around the world to suffer and lose out on the health and wealth benefits of the cannabis plant. See, our mission is that we are the catalyst to stir a movement that inspires people 
to confidently move into the legal space as entrepreneurs, as formulators, as investors, really evoking the courage and strength of people to take back their health, wealth, legacy, and freedom. So tonight we're gonna to talk about hypertension. We're gonna talk about heart disease. We're gonna talk about coronary artery disease and how this plant can help those who suffer from those conditions. So hypertension or high blood pressure affects nearly 75 million Americans. That's about a third of the adult population in the US. So it's a pretty significant issue. There is something called stress-induced hypertension, and it's really common, right? Most of us are stressed out in our nine to five jobs, and it's really due to the pressures at work and in daily life. I'm telling you, I have a very stressful job, right? Everyone thinks that when a baby comes, it's not, you know, stressful, but we have some really tense moments, right? When moms can go into cardiac arrest, they may have a cardiomyopathy, where babies don't always come out healthy or alive. So stress is found in a lot of our daily work areas, as well as past traumas. Those are when people have those PTSD moments where those remembrance of past traumas can also cause an elevation in blood pressure. And we know that high blood pressure can increase the risk of developing heart conditions or stroke if they're not addressed. So there is a litany of medications. I'm telling you from hydrochlorothiazide to lisinopril to procardia, to amlodipine, to varsartan. I mean, many of you on the line may recognize some of these names or may even be on multiple medications for their high blood pressure. So we know that in the African American community that heart attacks, strokes, and hypertension is very prevalent. In fact, it's, it's known that African American men and women over the age of 20 have higher blood pressures more often than white men and white women. Some other facts about hypertension is that when the pressure in the vessels is high, it helps or it causes the blood that has to be pumped throughout the body to be difficult. Normal blood pressure is defined as anything below 120 over 80 and anything over 140 over 90 is considered high blood pressure. Uh, there's a number of uh, conditions that when that pressure is high and it's not addressed, it can lead to eye damage, it can lead to stroke, it can even lead to atherosclerosis or hardening of the arteries. So it's really important that if you are suffering from elevated blood pressures that you visit your doctor regularly. So here are some of the categories that the American Heart Association and the American Stroke Association categorizes blood pressure. Normal, again, is that upper number or that systolic number. It should be less than 120. And that bottom number or that diastolic number is less than 80. And it's really the diastolic number, that bottom number, that's really important because it's letting us know that your heart is able to relax between contractions. Now, elevated starts at between 120 to 129 systolically and less than 80 diastolic. Stage one hypertension is any systolic number between 130 and 139 and any diastolic or the lower number between 80 to 89. Now stage two is 140 or higher systolic or 90 or higher diastolic. And then the hypertensive crisis where you need to immediately get to an ER 
is a systolic higher than 180 and or a diastolic higher than 120. So again, the complications of hypertension is in organ damage. Now this is really serious. That's why you should never play around with your blood pressure. If your blood pressure is high, you should always get regular checks from your physician. Why? Because it can end up in a heart attack or a myocardial infarction, or it can end up in a lot of patients that I see who are pregnant, who have not seen a doctor since maybe their last pregnancy, which could have been five or 10 years ago, and they develop a cardiomyopathy. So that is a long-term standing untreated hypertension where the heart and the muscles become very big and even heart failure. Another long-term in organ damage complication to high blood pressure is renal failure. So that's another reason why we see so many dialysis centers all across America, again, from hypertension not being treated long-term and causing the kidneys to fail. And then there's something called blood vessel damage, where there's damage to the blood vessels that can cause atherosclerosis and even more deadly, an aneurysm. Neuro neurological damage can cause dementia and even strokes. Again, making sure that if you have been diagnosed with hypertension, please, folks, don't play around with that. Retinopathy. Long-term hypertension can end up causing blindness, visual loss, as well as confusion and convulsions and even seizures. So severe headaches. All of these are complications to untreated hypertension. So let's talk about women. You know, a lot of women think the number one killer is breast cancer. But heart disease is the number one killer of women. Heart disease causes one in three deaths of women each year. 90% of women have one or more risk factors. And it's estimated that 43 million women in the United States are affected by heart disease. And we look at women's warning signs versus men. They're quite different. When women are having a heart attack, they may experience lightheadedness or dizziness, uh, upper back pressure, chest pressure, shortness of breath, pain in one or both arms, the back, neck, jaw, or stomach, or even fainting or fatigue. Women typically may not experience the typical chest pain that's often noted in most common signs of heart attack. Some women even think they're having symptoms associated with the flu. Now, men on the other side typically will have warning signs of a heart attack. They will have cold sweats or nausea. They may have chest pressure or pain. They may have shortness of breath or pain in one or both arms, the back, neck, jaw, or stomach. So you can see that there's very different warning signs with men versus women, but it's immediate these symptoms you need to call 911 when we look at heart disease in the african american community we see that black men and black women have higher rates of heart disease than white men and white women there was a big myth that older white american men had the highest rate of heart disease but in reality it's really black men and black women. In fact, black men between the ages of 45 and 64 have a 70% higher risk of developing heart failure than white men. And the annual rate of the first heart attack and first stroke is higher in black Americans than white Americans. So this is a really big problem that we face in the African American community. So what can you do to lower your risk of heart disease? Well, if you smoke, stop smoking. If you don't exercise, start exercising. 
if you're eating a lot of processed food and fried food and meat, try to incorporate a plant-based diet. And if you're drinking alcohol, please limit alcohol or to avoid it altogether to keep your heart healthy. Get regular testing by your doctor, making sure your cholesterol levels, your CRP levels, your homocysteine levels, and getting frequent EKGs. So let's talk about how cannabis, how can cannabis help keep our hearts healthy? Well, the first thing we need to go over is cannabis as a plant. The plant has two different species. One species is the hemp species. That is a species that contains very low levels of THC, which is 0.3% or less. Now, THC is the compound, which is tetrahydrocannabinol, which is the part of the plant that gives us the high or the euphoria. Species one, hemp, has very little THC. It contains more of the CBD or the cannabidiol. That is a portion of the plant that gives us the health benefits. The other species is marijuana. Marijuana is, of course, one that contains very little CBD or cannabidiol and more than 20% of THC. So it's important that you distinguish and understand that tonight we're going to be talking about CBD that's extracted from species one, extracted from the hemp portion of the cannabis plant. What is CBD? Well, CBD is an abbreviation for cannabidiol. And again, we saw in the, in the previous slide that CBD can come from hemp and it can come from marijuana. But the most common cannabinoid or the most common compound found is in the hemp. CBD is found in the hemp plant. And that's what we're going to concentrate on tonight. Our products are extracted from the hemp species. Now, unlike THC, CBD does not get you high. That's another important fact that you need to understand that our products will not get you high. There's no euphoria. There is no mind altering effects like we see THC. In fact, I've been using CBD in my practice for the last three years. I've used it in conjunction with other traditional forms of treatment that we use for various diseases like diabetes and hypertension and anxiety and all of the other medical conditions that we face today. So when we look at the plant, we look at all of the other compounds that the plant has. But as you see here in my health, my healthy will, as I call it, CBD or cannabidiol is the hero, right? CBD has a long, long list of medicinal properties. But to talk about tonight's presentation, let's look at how CBD is beneficial to the heart. Well, CBD is a neuroprotective. And a neuroprotective means that in those patients who have high blood pressure and it's uh, not treated effectively and they, they have a stroke or they have a heart attack, studies have shown that early uh, dosing and using CBD soon after that heart attack or stroke can be neuroprotective and protect the nervous system to regain its full um, stability. CBD also helps to reduce inflammation. And when we look at certain disease entities like hypertension, like heart disease, like obesity, like diabetes, um, arthritis, when we look at these chronic long-term conditions, the common denominator is inflammation. And we saw in the previous slides that in hypertension, we have inflammation of the blood vessels. So CBD comes in and reduces that inflammation. CBD also reduces the risk of arterial blockage. And we'll see that long-term hypertension can cause atherosclerosis. So it reduces the arterial blockage. It also helps to relieve 
pain and anxiety. Many of you will go to the doctor's office, right? And you get a little anxious. Maybe it's a new doctor, or maybe it's a doctor you really don't like. And you'll see many times that your blood pressure goes up, right? So it is something we call a white coat effect, where you see the white coat coming through the door and you get a little anxiety. Well, CBD will come and reduce that anxiety. CBD also is a vasorelaxant. So that means it comes in and dilates the vessels to help that blood pressure and the tension in the vessels to be reduced. Well, let's look at some of the other cannabinoids. Let's look at Delta 9 THC. It also has some medicinal properties, not as many as CBD, but you can see that it helps to reduce nausea and vomiting. It helps to relieve pain. It can stimulate the appetite and suppresses muscle spasms. We'll look at CBG and CBC. Again, reduction in inflammation. And that truly is the bottom line when we see those who have hypertension, those who have heart disease, those who have coronary artery disease. If we can reduce the inflammation in those vessels, we can promote a healthier heart. So how does CBD and THC and all these other cannabinoids work? Well, there is a system that we all possess. We all have an endocannabinoid system. And this system is one of the most vital regulatory systems within the human body. This system is made up of receptors, receptors that are found in the brain, CB1, and the central nervous system, and receptors that are found in the periphery and the immune system, CB2. This system is also made up of cannabinoids that our body produces. Yeah, our body produces cannabinoids that are endogenous. So we call them endocannabinoids. These endocannabinoids help to reduce stress and inflammation. Two of the endocannabinoids that our body makes are one, anandamide. Now, anandamide is the endocannabinoid of bliss. It makes us feel calm. It reduces stress and inflammation. And then the other endocannabinoid is called 2-AG. Again, its role is truly in reducing inflammation and pain as well. These uh, endocannabinoid or the endocannabinoid system is also made up of receptors. Now the CB1 receptors and the CB2 receptors are looking for cannabinoids. So when our body is deficient in making anandamide or 2-AG, that's when we need to bring in that CBD oil. That CBD oil is going to attach to these receptors they're going to send a signal to decrease inflammation, either inflammation that is leading in the immune system or helping to relax and to decrease anxiety in the nervous system. There are also receptors found in other organs and glands. We have receptors in every single organ and gland in our body to put our body back in balance. So these receptors are in the eyes. Remember, I talked about how long-term hypertension can lead to what? It can lead to retinopathy or visual loss or even blindness. So those receptors in the eyes are looking for CBD. There are receptors in the lungs, in the liver, in the kidneys. We talked about long-term hypertension causing renal failure, kidney failure. Those receptors in the kidneys are looking for CBD to put it back into balance. There are receptors in the bowel, in the skin, in the stomach, in the teeth, and even the heart. So CBD helps to relax the heart's arterial walls. Now this is really important because when we have hypertension or high blood pressure, the vessels or the pressure in the vessels or the arterial walls become very, very tense. When they become tense, it's really hard to get the blood pumped out to the different parts of our organs. So CBD comes in and reduces the inflammation and reducing inflammation can reduce blockage. It helps to lower blood pressure because it's a vasorelaxant. 
CBD also helps to lower cholesterol. And we talked about how CBD also reduces anxiety and stress, which regulates the heartbeat. Again, all of this plays into the endocannabinoid system, having receptors specifically in the different parts of the heart to help reduce the pressure. There are also studies that show that CBD, again, is a neural protective. This means that it can protect the heart against any cardiovascular condition or stroke. CBD, again, is also an anxiolytic and an analgesic, which means that it can help reduce stress, it can help reduce pain, and many times when you are in pain, it causes your blood pressure to be elevated. It's just like when a woman is in labor and the nurse calls me and says, Dr. Rita, her blood pressure is elevated. Well, let's make sure we're not taking her blood pressure when she's having a contraction, right? So all of that comes into play to reduce the resting blood pressure when those people are also in pain. So some of the other studies show that coronary artery disease or atherosclerosis is a very common contributing factor to strokes and heart attacks. Atherosclerosis is something that unfortunately caused the demise of my mom. She had coronary artery disease, she had triple bypass, and did not survive that surgery. So that's when the plaque builds up over time in our arteries and can cause a partial or cause a total blockage. Total blockage can cause a blood flow to stop going to the brain, the pelvis, the heart, the legs, the arms, or the kidney. So this is a very, very serious, serious disease. And there are studies that show that cannabis can be beneficial to reduce the progression or at, of atherosclerosis. So this was a really interesting study. If any of you are on the line, you may be in the healthcare profession, you may be a physician or a nurse on the line, but what they did, they gave a group of mice a high cholesterol diet for 11 weeks, and it was designed to clog their arteries. At week six, some mice were given THC. They were given one milligram of THC daily, and those mice were noted to have the most significant improvement. So what this study showed was that there is some findings that THC and CBD when given can inhibit the progression of coronary artery disease. I also have for those who are out there, some studies that you can look into further that actually show that the endocannabinoid system has a direct role in the cardiovascular system. Again, those CB1 and those CB2 receptors are looking for CBD and THC to put the body back in balance, specifically the heart. So we're gonna talk about uh, our product line here at Wakana and how we can use some of these products as we address those people, loved ones, or maybe even yourself on the line that may have heart disease. It's important to understand that the FDA does not approve any of these statements. If you are pregnant, if you're nursing, if you're under a physician's care, if you're on medication for high, high, high blood pressure, hypertension, heart disease, uh, congestive heart failure, please consult your physician before using any of these products. So our product line is just so amazing. We have a power line, as you can see on the left. Those are our products that are with the black label. Those are our full spectrum products. That means that they have the full component of the cannabinoids that we talked about, that CBD, CBG, CBN, CBC, as well as 0.3% or less of THC, which is the legal limit of THC. Again, our products will not get you high. There are no euphoria. Our products are legal because the 2018 Farm Bill 
legalize CBD that is extracted from the hemp species in all 50 states. Our other product line is our pure line. That's our broad spectrum line. That is a line that contains less than 0.0% of THC. It's a great product line for those who want to address issues with the heart, but may have random drug screens at their job. So that is the pure line or our broad spectrum line. Well, let's talk about a couple of our products that you can use if you want to continue to have a healthy heart, or maybe you are uh, battling that uh, pre-hypertensive stage, or maybe you have hypertension and are on medications. Our first product is called our Power Hemp MD. It is our more potent product. It is a more therapeutic product. It contains between 600 and 800 milligrams of a full spectrum CBD. Again, this is a tincture, which means it is an oil that you hold underneath the tongue for about 60 seconds before you swallow. I love this product because this is a product that can be used in those who have mild to moderate and even severe conditions that they want to address where CBD can come in and again reduce inflammation, a vasorelaxant, a vasodilator, as well as an anti-anxiolytic to help to bring down stress and even pain. Our other power products are our Hempranium 500. Now these are uh, not as potent, they're 500 milligrams of CBD. Our first product on the left is a tincture. Again, that is a product that you place underneath the tongue. And I always, with my patients, start low and start slow. There is no need to take a lot of CBD when you're starting out. When you start out, you introduce CBD slowly to the system. So three drops in the morning, three drops in the evening is where I start my patients. Now our Impranium 500 has additional certified organic USDA oils, essential oils. Those essential oils that our formulators have used in our products to enhance the anti-inflammatory properties of CBD include black seed, turmeric, and peppermint. These very powerful essential oils help reduce inflammation, help to um, improve the vasodilation of the vessels, as well as it gives it a nice flavor. Our water soluble is our next product. It's again a 500 milligram in a 15 ml bottle of CBD. It is a product that you can use to infuse your beverages or food so you don't have to hold this product underneath your tongue. And then our Culinary Plus is a great product for those who like to bake and to cook. Now this product, because it's not flavored with the peppermint and turmeric and the black seed, again, makes it more uh, palatable for those who wanna bake and cook, as well as you can use it as a tincture. Now when you're using products as a tincture, as we talked about. Again, I start low and I start slow. That's just how I start my patients. Three drops in the morning, three drops in the evening. It's really important when you start out to make sure that the oil is underneath at the floor of the mouth before you swallow. Holding it 60 seconds allows the oil to be absorbed in those sublingual glands so that the CBD can get to the bloodstream within 15 to 20 minutes. It's important not to touch the lips or the teeth, right? You don't want to contaminate your oil with sometimes bacteria that can be in our mouth. And again, holding it underneath the tongue for 60 seconds. Another very nice product that I like to use in my hypertensive patients are our gummies. Our gummies is a great way to get CBD in a different way. G 
gummies take about 45 minutes to 90 minutes sometimes to get into the bloodstream. Why? Because when you eat a gummy, it's got to go through the stomach, through the liver, and then it gets into the bloodstream. This is a full spectrum gummy. Each gummy is 25 milligrams of CBD. And we understand that our body heals and restores itself when we sleep. So I always recommend one gummy at night so that the body can heal, the body can get the anti-inflammatory properties that it needs, and also that restorative sleep, that rapid eye movement sleep that we need. So gummies are a great combination with the tincture or the water soluble or the culinary plus for those who want to improve their blood pressure. And then we have our vape oil cartridge. I love vaping because the onset of action of vaping is within one to five minutes. We understand that those who have a lot of anxiety, have you seen people that are real anxious in their type A? Those are typically people that have high blood pressure. So the onset of vaping can help to bring down uh, their anxiety very quickly. Vape oils are, again, uh, the bioavailability is about 60%. So I love vaping because not only is it fast acting, but it's more available to the cells and you don't need a lot. One to three pulls, three times per day is all you need. Now, each cartridge contains 200 milligrams of CBD, again, in a... Uh, carrier oil of MCT along with turmeric and black seed. Those additional certified USDA certified organic oils really help to reduce inflammation. We also have a pre-rolled CBD joint. Again, another form and a great way to get CBD into the system by smoking a joint. This is 163 milligrams of CBD. So you don't want to smoke the whole roll in one city. Again, one to three pulls is all you need. That one joint can easily last you three to four weeks. Another great way to get CBD in quickly. We also have products that are uh, for your culinary use. Our uh, spices, Again, contain a CBD full spectrum. We have a CBD infused butter. We have a vegan and grass fed, as well as our CBD culinary oil. So what a great way to enhance not only your food, but to improve, again, blood pressure and inflammation when we're dealing with hypertension, heart disease, and even culinary coronary artery disease. Now our CBD culinary oil is enhanced and infused with grape seed oil. Grape seed oil, oh my goodness, the medicinal properties of grape seed oil are many. One being being an anti-inflammatory, two being an anti-anxiolytic, just addressing those free radicals. Another way to get CBD into the system. And then our pure products. I love our pure products because we have a special delivery system, which is called nanotechnology. Nanotechnology is where the CBD molecule is made more water soluble. When you make the CBD molecule more water soluble, it's more bioavailable to the cells. So this nanotechnology added to our broad spectrum product is 98.7% bioavailable. Our pure products, remember, contain less than 0.0% of THC, a great product for those who have random drug screens at their job. Our pure products come in a tincture. That means you hold the oil underneath the tongue for 60 seconds before you swallow, as well as a water soluble, a great product that you can use to infuse in your beverages, and your food. The potency of the tincture is 300 milligrams in a 15 ml bottle. So again, start low, start slow with three drops in the morning and three drops in the evening. 
Many of you on the line may be on medication. You may be on medication for your blood pressure. It's real important to understand that when you're using CBD and you're on medication, to separate your dosing in uh, taking your blood pressure medication or any other medication by an hour. So you don't want to take it with your medication. You want to take it an hour after you take your medication. Drug, 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 drug interaction can occur. Uh, it occurs typically with those medications uh, that interact with the cytochrome P450 system. That's the system uh, that is drugs that are metabolized by the liver. Those drugs are typically drugs that are blood thinners like warfarin or Coumadin. There's some other drugs that may interact with CBD. Theophylline is another drug that we use for uh, asthma. And certain substances uh, that uh, grapefruit or pre-existing health conditions that may have the ability of processing the same time through the liver. So it doesn't mean that you cannot take CBD if you're on a blood thinner, warfarin or Coumadin, or if you're on Theophylline, but it's important that you always consult with your doctor if you're on these medications. Another thing that you need to know is that CBD truly is a very powerful vasodilator. It is a powerful anti-inflammatory. It is a powerful vasorelaxant. So if you are taking CBD and you have high blood pressure, it's really important that you let your physician know because your blood pressure is going to improve. I've seen it. I've used CBD in my practice for the last three years. So you're going to, you know, make sure your doctor knows that he's going to, or she is going to have to start weaning you off of your medication because you're going to start seeing improvement. So again, we have products that are uh, products you can trust. Our products are sourced from farms that grow hemp organically. Our farms are in Oregon, Colorado, and Kentucky. Our products are double certified and third-party validated. That means that before they even hit your shelf, that we test to ensure that the products are free from mold, mildew, heavy metals, pesticides, and that the products have the proper amount of THC, the legal amount, which is 0.3%, and it has the appropriate percentage of cannabinoids, CBD, THC, and all of the other cannabinoids. So don't die from a broken heart. Get your CBD today. I want to thank you for um, joining this webinar. Uh, I'm going to open it up for questions now. Uh, you can put your questions in the chat area. Uh, I'm going to also look at some questions in the Q&A area, if you have any. The chat area is right here on the right side, and you can type them in right here for me. So any questions that you may have about our products, our product line, let's keep the questions specific to the topic tonight, if at all possible, which is hypertension, heart disease, coronary artery disease, One question is, will your doctor prescribe this or how to get it? So CBD is not a prescribed product. The way that you get our product is whoever invited you on the line, Gina, you're going to give them a call and you're going to get your product from the person that invited you on the line. Very good question. It's important to know how you get your product. So any other questions? Gigi, you have a raised hand. Do you recommend taking CBD while breastfeeding? Well, it's interesting that you asked that question because we talked about two endocannabinoids. 
One endocannabinoid or endogenous cannabinoid that our body makes is called anandamide. And anandamide is found in breast milk. So you want to consult with your ob because I'm not your ob but you want to consult with your ob before taking CBD while breastfeeding. Is too much to vape to take oil under tongue? No. So the question is, is it too much to vape and take the oil or tincture under the tongue? I absolutely recommend that you use a tincture twice a day and you use your vape oil cartridge whenever you have an acute onset of any issue. You may have an acute onset of anxiety or pain or um, migraine or any acute onset of any issue is when I use vapes. I use vapes because the onset of action is within one to five minutes. So no, it's not too much to use that bait during those acute issues, but knowing that using the oil or tincture under the tongue twice a day is going to keep a steady state of CBD in your system. Are the gummies kosher? No, the gummies are not kosher. They are vegan, they're non-GMO, but they are not kosher. Dr. Rita, you were very thorough. You covered all the areas. Thank you. Can CBD hemp stop back pain? Absolutely, yes. CBD hemp is an anti-inflammatory and it's an analgesic. So it's a great option to use for back pain, knee pain, shoulder pain, hip pain, instead of using drugs like acetaminophen or Tylenol, which can cause long-term liver failure. It's a great option instead of using non steroidal medications like Motrin or Aleve or Ibuprofen, which can cause kidney failure. Will vaping affect a person with asthma? Well, if you have asthma, I wouldn't recommend using vape as your number one go-to. If you have asthma, I would recommend using the tincture or water soluble. Why? Because you want to first decrease the inflammatory process that's going on in the lungs. So if you have asthma, that wouldn't be my first go-to. My first go-to would be to start the tincture or start the water soluble or have a gummy. I'm taking three different meds for high blood pressure. My goal is to be medication free. What do you think I should use? Well, the first thing I think you should use is your um, ability to take this information to your primary care physician, to your physician, your doctor. Because while you are on CBD, your blood pressure is going to improve. And what you don't want to happen is your physician not know why your blood pressure is improving because if he doesn't or she doesn't know this, then your blood pressure can become too low. So you want to make sure that if you're on this line and you are on medication for high blood pressure, you want to engage your physician with this process. You know, that's how we get a lot of physicians in Wakana. We get a lot of physicians because their patients are improving. And they ask their patients, well, what are you doing? And they let them know that it's CBD. So you want to make sure that you are taking your blood pressure at home, that you have a blood pressure cuff, that you are engaging your physician, letting your physician know, hey, I'm using this CBD. My blood pressures are improving. Can you start reducing some of these medications? Guess what? Your physician absolutely is going to work with you. And if your physician doesn't want to work with you, this is a time you may want to find a new physician. Will this product cause me to gain weight by being hungry? No. So this is not like the traditional marijuana that gives you the munchies. This is CBD, cannabidiol. It's going to give you the health benefits without the high. You have thyroid issues? Yes, CBD hemp has been shown to decrease the inflammation 
in the thyroid. When we look at chronic diseases like hyperthyroidism, hypothyroidism, Graves' disease, Hashimoto's disease, what's the common denominator? It's inflammation. CBD is a powerful anti-inflammatory, so we want to get CBD in to address even thyroid disease. What if my CBD makes me too? And you'll have to repeat that question because I don't understand what M-I-A-M is. CBD can help with most allergies, absolutely. Any al uh, allergies, allergic reaction, again, is the inflammation of the immune system, the cytokines. CBD is an anti-inflammatory. It will help with allergies. Along with allergies, you got to take dairy out of your diet. My son, my middle son, had the worst allergies. I took him off of dairy. I put him on CBD. And I'm telling you, he is fine. He can go outside with the pollen rolling around with no problems. My CBD makes me too sleepy. If your CBD makes you too sleepy, then that means that you are taking too much CBD. Start low and start slow. Three drops in the morning, three drops in the evening. After four days, if you find that the CBD is not addressing your issues, you can increase this after four days. Increase it to six drops in the morning and six drops in the evening. You've got to find that sweet spot. That sweet spot is that spot where you get resolution of symptoms. So CBD, when you take too much of it, yes, it can make you a little sleepy. It can cause a little dry mouth. It can also cause a little nausea. So you've got to work out with the dosing until you find what we call that sweet spot. What you recommended for a three to four year old, what does a three to four year old have? Why would we be recommending it for a three to four year old? I need some more information. If topical relief doesn't work when placed on the area of pain, would tincture be better? Well, I like to combine our products. So if you are having pain, you want to use the tincture twice a day. You want to use the topical relief as needed. And you also want to use the gummies at night. You want to decrease the inflammation as much as possible so that using a combination of all of those products, that's the tincture, that's the topical, and the gummy. Great question. I guess the three to four year old has seasonal allergies. For a three to four year old, I would take dairy out of their diet first before I use a CBD product. After taking dairy out of their diet, I would need to know what the weight of that three to four year old is and we can dose according to their weight. Does topical CBD go through the body? Great question. When you use our topical products, topical products do not pass through the blood-brain barrier, which means they will not show up on a urine drug screen. So our topical pain relief, though it contains 0.3% or less of THC, will not pass through the blood-brain barrier. Our topical body cream, our topical CBD lube, will not pass through the blood-brain barrier. Any other questions? Great, great questions. So if there are no other questions, I really want you to contact the person that invited you on this call. That person is going to get you those products ordered um, and get you those products ordered tonight. I want to invite you and your physician to join me every Wednesday night. Every Wednesday night, I pick a different topic. We talk about how CBD can improve the health and wellness of our loved ones, of ourselves, and even using CBD as a preventative measure. Some of you on the line may say, you know, there's nothing wrong with me. I'm completely healthy. Well, CBD has been shown to help to be a preventative measure for those 
who may down the line develop chronic disease entity. So thank you so much for tuning in. Again, contact the person that invited you on the line. We'll see you next Wednesday. Same Zoom ID link. Have a great night.